الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنحتدي الاولى ان هدانا الله وصلى الله على سيدنا حبيبنا مولانا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي امين respected brothers and sisters we begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala God almighty as he is most worthy and deserving of our praise we ask Allah and we ask Allah alone to guide us to prevent us from being misguided and from misguiding others we ask Allah to bless us to keep our communities safe to keep our families safe and healthy we ask Allah to bless his noble prophet Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam to bless his noble companions his family and the righteous everywhere ameen Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran refers to and exposes to us several conversations that will occur in the afterlife in the life hereafter between those who have well in several places between those who are ashabul nar and ashabul janna between people who are dwellers of paradise and dwellers of the hellfire elsewhere in the quran allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about a conversation or conversations that will take place between him and the people of the hellfire and in one such example in surah al-mu'minun in the 23rd chapter of the Quran Allah Ta'ala tells us about such a conversation and in it Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala asks the people who lived this life frivolously and didn't do much in terms of obedience to Allah didn't do what was required of them what was called upon them and Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala will say قَالَ كَمْ لَبِسْتُمْ فِي الْعَرْضِ عَدَدًا سِينِينَ He will say, How long did you dwell on the earth? How long did you dwell on the earth? How long was your existence? How long do you think that you lived? And they will say, قَالُوا لَبَثْنَا يَوْمًا أَوْ بَعْدَ يَوْمًا فَاسْأَلُوا عَدِّينَ That perhaps we lived a day or a portion of a day a day or two ask those who keep account of such things and i want to pause here and talk about this exchange in particular because it underscores our temporal existence the very word the very idea of a temporal existence is that we exist in time right time has consequence on us. The last time I was here, in fact, I talked about the idea that the Arabs have many words. In fact, many words are employed in the Quran and in the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to describe or to talk about time because time is important. And when something has multiple words that are used or employed it underscores the importance or the value of that term so there's dhahr and asr and sa and waqt zaman so many words that are employed that refer to this idea or refer to time because we are temporal beings we live in time whereas allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is beyond time god almighty is outside of time he created time but we are temporal beings and the very word temporal beings reminds you of what that this life and that this existence this temporal existence is exactly that it is temporary it is temporary here for a limited time not for eternity and so this conversation that occurs where allah asks potentially all of us potentially any one of us how long did you live in this in this existence how long was your life and you will respond we will respond by saying 
it was a day or maybe a part of a day. Because that's how we conceptualize time, right? When we think about time, scholars tell us that there is what they call or they refer to as prospective time and then there is retrospective time. Prospective time is time right now, right? If I ask you to uh, tell me when a minute is up, you can probably do a pretty accurate job of coming and telling me when a minute has expired. But if I ask you to tell me when a year has expired or 10 years has expired, you'll have a more difficult time if you don't have a watch or something that tracks time for you. Because this is how we analyze or how we look at time, either prospectively or retrospectively in the past. And so when we look at our existence in the retrospective, that is what is happening here in this conversation. How long did you live on the earth? You're being called on to, res to reflect on retrospective time, time that has already occurred. And you'll say a day, maybe a portion of a day, because that's how we conceptualize time. And for those of us who are probably 40 or over, can appreciate the fact that our memories, our concept of a decade of your 30s or your 40s feels a lot quicker, right, than it did when you were a teenager or when you were in your 20s. That's not because time has changed or we've measured time differently, but it's rather how we think about time in the past versus time in the present. And I say all of that to ask you to reflect on something. And that is that I imagine all of us, each and every one of us, has lost someone dear to us. A parent, a sibling, a relative, so on. If I ask you to close your eyes and to think about that loved one, and if you were to ask, or if I were to ask you to try and either write down or journal or document all of the memories that you have associated with that person. So I personally would think about my father, right? Who I lost now uh, 12 years ago. I spent 40, almost 40 years of my life with my father. But if I were to think back and to journal all of my memories of my father, I, could prob I would probably be hard pressed and I would find it difficult that in the accumulation of all those memories and his advice that he gave me and the moments that I shared with him and what I was able to glean and get from his life and his, his teachings and his advice to me, and how he lived, and how he spoke, and how he conducted his day-to-day -day life, I would probably find it difficult to even come up with a month of time. If I were to accumulate, as I said, all the memories that I have of my father, all the things he said to me, all the memories that I have, I would probably find it difficult to even document one month and he lived 62 years of his life. I spent 40 years with him. That is because, or that is, the nature of this world. That is the nature of temporal existence. It is temporary, and it feels as such when we reflect back on it. And so the important thing, the lesson, brothers and sisters then, about the temporal existence that we live. We can't get out of temporal existence. Well, we can by dying. That's how we are uh, relieved of temporal existence, if you will. But otherwise, that's the nature of this dunya. That's the nature of this world, is that this life is temporal. And so we can't do a lot about retrospective time those that time that has expired. What we can do and what we can be mindful of is prospective time. How we live 
each and every moment, going forward today, how you live your life, the memories that you will cherish, the legacy that you will live 20 years from now, 30 years from now, my child may have to reflect back on my life and the moments that she shared with me or that they shared with me. And they may find it hard pressed to document a month of memories that I have left behind with my children, with my wife, with the people that I love and that I care for and that I spend time with. And so, well, all that we can do is be cognizant of and be mindful of our perspective moments that we live. How we choose to live our life going forward from this moment. How we choose to think about the legacy that we leave behind. The memories that our loved ones will cherish of us. How we will be judged on that final day, on Yom Asah, the final day where Allah will judge us for our actions. How that will all turn out is the moments that you have going forward. And we don't know how many moments there are. They are. We don't know. And again, that's the nature of this world. But what we can do is make each and every moment important and we can focus on those things that matter and those things that are of importance to us. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the tawfiq, the ability to be cognizant of our time going forward, to make our time meaningful, to do those things that are important and have consequence and have meaning and have profound meaning, both in our lives and the lives of those that we will one day leave behind. وَأَخْرُمْ دَعْوَانَا الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ إِنَّ الْحَمْدَ لِلَّهِ نَحْمَدُهُ وَنَسْتَعِينُهُ وَنَسْتَغْفِرُهُ وَنَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ شُرُورِ أَنفُسِنَا وَمِنْ سَيِّيَاتِ أَعْمَالِنَا مَنْ يَهْدِهِ اللَّهُ فَلَا مُبْضِلَّ لَا وَمَنْ يُضْلِلْ فَلَا هَادِيَ لَا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصلى الله على سيدنا حبيبنا مولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتنا إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد ربنا لا تؤاخذنا ان نسينا او اخطانا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا اسرا كما همته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا بوعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين يا أيها الذين هم ربنا أتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخر حسنة وقنا عذاب النار سبحان ربك رب العزة ما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وأقيم الصلاة